We have a special guest in my video today, my dog. My name is Julie and I am a freelance bridal makeup artist. I do specialize primarily in bridal. As you can tell by the title, I'm going to be going over how to build up clientele when you're first beginning as a makeup artist. I did one of these videos way back when, I think it was in 2020 when I first started my YouTube channel. Man, was that super awkward. I was so awkward talking to the camera. The lighting was not very good, even though I felt like I was killing it back then. So if you guys are new to my channel, and haven't found that video, just watch this one instead. It will save you about 15 minutes of awkwardness. You're welcome. So number one is building your portfolio. And not many people focus on this first. They normally concentrate on reaching out to people first, but I think that's people's mistake. It's really hard for somebody to book you and wanna pay your prices if you don't have any work or any pictures posted on your social media pages. So that's why you wanna make sure you concentrate on your portfolio and building up that before you even start your social media pages. That way you have some something up on your page and it doesn't just look like a brand new page and a brand new Instagram that somebody started. For building your portfolio, use your free resources. Not many people are going to be opposed to you reaching out to them and being like, hey, I'm a new makeup artist starting in the industry. Would you be okay if I gave you a free makeup application? When I first started as a makeup artist, I literally grabbed a ton of friends and just did a whole bunch of makeup looks. It is really nice to make sure that you have a versatile amount of makeup looks and also skin tones and age ranges on your portfolio as well just so people know that you can do literally everybody. The other thing you can do with this is you can host model calls. These model calls are completely for free. You can technically charge materials or supply fees if you want to for maybe like $25, $30 or something. But in my mind, if the client is not the one that is choosing the makeup look and I'm the one that's choosing the makeup look, I don't really feel like it's right personally to charge them for anything. And also you'll get more people that way, obviously, if you have it completely free of charge. The only thing you may ask of them is that they post your work in return turn on their social media. So that way you can get advertisement for your services and then you get a whole entire separate audience which is their friends and family. If you can tell, this is literally all about networking. It's about building relationships. About 99% of your clients are going to come from referrals. So the more people that you know and the more people that know you do makeup, the more clients you're going to get. I'm gonna briefly cover this, but when you take photos, you want to make sure that you're taking it with a good quality camera. No, I'm not meaning that you need a professional Sony Nikon camera. You just need to have a camera that takes high resolution photos. I personally take all of mine in portrait mode with my iPhone 11 and that's literally all I use for my client photos. I'll show you guys what my Instagram feed looks like right here and as you guys can tell they're really high quality photos. I want to let you know though that the best quality camera cannot account for lighting. When you want to take high quality high resolution photos you want to make sure that your lighting is really great and really clear. I used to take photos in dark lit rooms or with fluorescent lighting and that is the absolute worst. The best way Way to take a photo is indoors and having somebody sit in front of a natural light source like I am right now. This is what you really want to focus on when you're taking photos. I have seen makeup artist portfolios before that do really excellent work and unfortunately the photos just don't show it because they're in really bad lighting or maybe it's really grainy because they don't have enough lighting. Plus people's eyes if you're just scrolling through a couple of makeup artist Instagrams are obviously going to be more attracted to the more HD quality pictures. So you also have to really think about how your clients are perceiving you and your portfolio as well. If you guys wanna know more in depth about lighting and how you take really good photos and also how you watermark your photos as well, I'll be linking a video right up here for you guys. So this kind of led into a little bit of the social media part and that is what I'm going to be talking about next. Number two is social media presence and that is a key in building clientele. A lot of people ask me if they should pay for advertisement, if they should pay for like the knot or wedding wire, if you're a bridal makeup artist, Google ads or Facebook ads or Instagram ads. My one tip for you guys is you don't need to pay for anything, honestly. Makeup artistry as a career is very expensive, especially when you're building up a makeup kit. You're going to have to invest so much. And if you can cut costs some way, then do it. I literally don't pay for hardly anything. I used to pay for a website called Thumbtack. It's kind of similar to the Knot or Wedding Wire, but it's not specifically bridal focused because when I first began, I was taking any single job that I could. I wasn't specifically focused on bridal. That was probably the worst decision that I ever made. I probably only had maybe three legitimate clients in the whole entire six months that I was on there. And you have to pay for every single inquiry that you get that actually pans out into a conversation. Even if that person doesn't book you, you still have to pay for it. So you're almost like gambling with your money at that point in time.
in time. It's really nice to just use the resources that you already have that you don't have to pay for. So Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok. I do highly encourage that you join as many social media platforms as you possibly can. The more social media platforms that you're on, the more ways that people can find you because usually people prefer one social media over another. YouTube and TikTok are completely different platforms since they do highly focus on videos. With Instagram and Facebook, I can definitely recommend to you guys that you want to start a professional business page. And this is a mistake that a lot of people make when they first begin is they don't want to create a separate account specifically for their businesses because they just don't want to take the effort in doing it or they maybe just don't see the benefit in this. Say it's my personal Instagram page and I start posting pictures of myself, my family, my dogs, and then all of a sudden it's pictures of my clients. It would be very confusing as a client to go scroll through that. And then a person starts thinking, hmm, are they really serious about makeup artistry? Is this what they actually want to be doing with their life? It's very confusing to an outside perspective. This business is not going to be easy and it's a lot to keep up with. I'm not gonna lie. That's why not everybody starts a business, but you do need to know that you're going to have to put in the effort and you're going to have to manage a ton of different things to make a successful business for yourself. I forgot to mention that you can always advertise yourself using styled shoots as well. I'm in the bridal industry, so it would be a photographer, a floor maybe somebody with a wedding dress, a hairstylist, and me. And then we would all collectively come together and do a styled bridal shoot. So basically a shoot where you would get a bride ready like a normal wedding day and they would take traditional wedding photos. You don't get paid for styled shoots, but you get paid an exposure because now you have professional photos from a photographer and you also have connections from every single one of the vendors that you worked with. And your name gets credited on every single one of the other vendor social media pages. All right, the third thing that I wanted to cover, and I think I already kind of covered this. The third thing though is marketing. This is the paid things that you actually do. So as I said before, I used to pay for Thumbtack. I do pay for Google ads currently and I would maybe highly recommend Google. There is a ton of people that actually do go on to Google and just maybe type in like Fort Wayne Bridal Makeup Artist or something and then Julie Marie Artistry pops up and then it's like the first advertisement that pops up on that page. So a lot of people can find me through there. I feel like I have had a ton of inquiries recently. You can spend however much you want. Um, it depends how many clicks you get, how many inquiries that you get to your website or your social media pages or wherever you'd like to direct that ad to. I have them go to my website because I have every single information piece that they would ever need to know on my website. Then, as I said before, you can also pay for Instagram or Facebook ads. You can also go onto the Knot or Wedding Wire if you're a bridal makeup artist. And then the other thing that I would highly recommend you pay for though is a website. I have a whole entire video that I created right up here. I can link for you guys. And that is going over how I created my website, what strategies that you need when building a website, so I will keep this very brief, but I have tried out two different website hosts now. Hosting websites are where you're actually going to have your domain through. Things like Wix, WordPress, Squarespace, and I currently use WordPress. WordPress is by far the best website you can use, the most customizable, and you can literally play with anything on that website. I used to use Wix, and Wix is really, really good for beginners or people that maybe aren't super tech savvy, but to me personally, all of the Wix websites that I've ever seen are pretty generic. Just check out my website video if you guys have questions. Even though you guys may think that just using social media is a great resource, there are so many things that you can't include on social media that you really need to have a separate website for. Number four is that you want to start connecting with anybody that you possibly can. The more people that know you do makeup, the more people that are going to have connections for you. When I first began, I posted on my Instagram page, on my Facebook page, start connecting with people that you don't know. So start out with connecting with other people people in your area that may be tied into the same field. So for me, I have been connecting with a whole bunch of wedding vendors. I've connected with photographers, florists, hairstylists. Usually when people are looking for makeup artists, they're also looking for hairstylists and vice versa. Since those two go hand in hand, it's really handy to have connections with other hairstylists, especially if you don't do hair. And then having connections with other makeup artists is really great too. Usually if you are connecting with another makeup artist, you guys can refer each other. You can go into somebody's secondary artist. They can also get jobs for you too. I will let you know that connecting with photographers specifically is very important, especially in the wedding industry. Photographers are one of the first vendors that a bride will choose besides just picking their venue. I've even done a couple of weddings for photographers in my area, and then they've obviously referred me to their clients. The other thing, if you're a bridal makeup artist too, is connecting with different wedding venues and getting on their vendor referral list. Usually brides book their venues first and they pick a date through the venue, but then sometimes the venues go, hey, do you want this vendor referral list? We know a bunch of these vendors 
leaders around this area, or sometimes they just send it out with their informational packet that they give their brides. So if you can get on these lists, that would be a fantastic resource for you. Now, a bunch of people do ask me how you reach out to all of these people. There is a very, very casual atmosphere that is happening now. You technically can do the formal approach where you email them, but I feel like a lot of venues, especially probably get spam emails and same with other people too. Like I always get spam emails in my account too. So the easiest way I found is doing the more casual approach, which nobody has minded so far with me doing is I've just messaged people on Instagram that I personally think is kind of the best way, even though it seems really unofficial because then you're automatically messaging from your business Instagram account, that vendor or venue can easily click on your name and see your whole entire profile and see if they actually like your work. So that's the benefit in actually messaging from your direct Instagram account, as opposed to doing it through an email. The next way you can promote yourself besides just reaching out to people is getting business cards. And again, kind of like the website seems like an older way of doing things. Some people believe in business cards and some people don't. A lot of people, I'm not gonna lie, have given me business cards and I've just thrown them in the trash. <laughs> but every once in a while, they are going to be very helpful. Business cards are not very expensive in the grand scheme of things. You can simplify it as much as possible or you can make them as fancy as you possibly want to. But because of the fact that people do throw them away so often, I wouldn't like heavily invest in business cards. Like I wouldn't pay for like embossed or like glitter letters or just do general business cards, but something that still looks professional and simple and not too cluttered. I'll put a picture of what my business cards look like up here in case you guys haven't seen them. I don't care how many years it's been. I don't care what age in social media that we're in right now. I seriously think that business cards do still show that you are a professional in your field. It shows that you do take the time to invest in your business, that you're really serious about it enough to get business cards and pay for them. And then you can also hand them out to different people that you know. So you you can hand them out to friends and family, give them a stack. Then a lot of the times when I show up for weddings, there's a whole bunch of different wedding vendors that I've never met before. A lot of photographers ask for my business cards if they like how the makeup turns out. A lot of hairstylists do. You just all usually exchange your business cards, especially during weddings. Then the other thing that I do with business cards is I have them in every single one of my bridal touch-up kits. If you guys haven't seen my bridal touch-up kit video, definitely go ahead and check that out. I show you guys exactly what I put in my touch-up kits, why you need to have them. Then the last thing I'm going to go over really freaking quick is furthering your education. Now, this is something that people don't really think about um, because nowadays I feel like the word makeup artist is kind of taken more as a loose term. I think it honestly is kind of because of social media influencers and people all over social media just calling themselves makeup artists. Don't murder me for this, but I consider a makeup artist somebody who can do makeup on other people and that is what their career is focused on. It is entirely different when you're doing makeup on somebody else as opposed to yourself. It's mainly because of hygiene practices or lack thereof. A lot of the times when social media influences or makeup artists do makeup on other people, they are very good. Like their makeup artistry skills are top notch, but they do not have any hygiene practices because they have not been formally trained as a makeup artist. And I feel like personally, and I know I've gotten shade for this before, but I will say it again. I don't consider people professional makeup artists unless they've had some sort of professional training. And I'm not talking about getting a license or anything. I'm talking about just having having some sort of formal education that another makeup artist has taught you or that you've learned from a class. I feel like the best way to learn about makeup artistry is doing it in person. And that's why I feel like on the job training is like the best way to do this. And this is how this is important in this whole entire building clientele situation. The more credentials that you can add to your portfolio, the more people will trust you and the more people think you are a legitimate makeup artist. So definitely before you do any of this with further education, make sure that you check the requirements in your area. In the United States, each state has a different state requirement by the State Board of Cosmetology for if you need a license or if you need a certification to practice as a makeup artist. But even if your state doesn't require anything, I would still do it. With me personally, I decided to get a job at Mac Cosmetics and that was such a blessing. I worked there for about three or four years. Like you go to a training that they call basic training <laughs> because you are in a classroom setting with a whole bunch of other people that are also going to be makeup artists for Mac as well. And you all do makeup applications on each other. It's kind of like a mini makeup academy and you probably learn as much stuff as you would in cosmetology school, if not more, because you get taught foundation matching, skin prep, makeup applications, how to do different eye shapes, how to apply false 
false lashes. It's just like a whole bunch of things that you would actually need to know as a makeup artist. I would not be the makeup artist that I am right now with the skill set that I have right now if I did not have that MAC training. So no matter how many videos that you watch and no matter how educated that you think you are, on the job training and practice is literally going to be your number one best friend. You're not going to get better if you don't do hands-on training. Then besides just doing on the job training, I would definitely educate yourself within a class. You can do what I did and took an online certification class. I went through the online makeup academy and I can leave my review up above here for you guys. I did make a whole entire separate review video over it and I learned so much. Like I love learning about other artists techniques. You get personalized video feedback from all of your instructors and you have to do makeup on actual people to be able to pass the class. So that's what I really like about it. They're going to be critiquing your work and giving you feedback and I absolutely love it. And I think that that is pretty much leaving off on the best note as I possibly can. Hopefully this wasn't super overwhelming for you guys. I know there was a ton of information inside of this video so I really hope that you guys were able to follow along. So if you guys did enjoy this video definitely go ahead and give me a big thumbs up as well as also subscribing to my channel. I do upload a ton of makeup artist related content, tips, vlogs, etc. So if you guys are interested in that type of content then definitely go ahead and subscribe to the channel. As always I hope you guys are having an absolutely fantastic day and I will talk to you guys in my next video. All right bye.